The third mega trend, the emergence of the wireless web. Already today, applications of wireless technology are a major driving of economic value in our European economy. They are estimated of roughly 250 billion euros, which means two to three percent of the GDP, and these numbers are rising. Wireless is a lighthouse of European technological leadership also. Uh, only one figure next year, there are going to be five billion uh, mobile handsets worldwide, three quarters of the planet's population. And this is an unprecedented development exceeding the diffusion rates of technology such as television or even pen and paper. And not only in terms of penetration and use, but also in terms of speed of take up. We are currently confronted with a once in a generation opportunity to make sure that Europe promotes and leads the next phase of wireless technology, which will be the transition from voice and short text services to the wireless web. And this is not futurology, ladies and gentlemen. Already today, all network infrastructures that are being built are internet enabled. The current generation of smartphones and the next generation of low-cost handsets have at least some internet capacity. And in the years to follow, most handsets and all networks we will build offer true wireless broadband, as well as RFID readers, which is another um, development very high on the agenda, as well as location-based technologies or near-field communication capacities. Now, what will be the result of this? The result will be an explosion of new applications, limited only by the limitation of our imagination. I can cite all the examples you want, uh, industrial, commercial applications in the supply chain, chain, nomadic services for mobile workers, remote environmental monitor, disaster and security systems that save lives, health and education services, and all this in addition to the traditional use of communication and entertainment. There are two crucial triggers for the wireless web. The first one is that the transition to, has to be on an open platform for mobile services. You know that uh, today's GSM and 3G platforms are closed. And operators are only now starting to realize that creating these wallet gardens does not work because it leads to a fragmentation of the market and into micronets instead of unleashing the global brain of the Internet. And second, we must also make sure that the spectrum will be released from the digital switch off in television and that it will be optimized for Europe's future. Here we are speaking, of course, of the so-called digital dividend. That means first, sufficiently large blocks of spectrum should be released to allow high-speed internet services over wireless. And second, that the dividend spectrum should be released in a way that promotes new competitors to enter and shake up the market. That is what we need, because this will allow an early shift from the legacy and the closed voice mobile to new open wireless web services. And third point, we need also these bands to be allocated in a coordinated way across the EU. Think about our internal market. Why? Because those are scale economies, which will be essential for our equipment providers and for our operators, thus allowing users to benefit quickly from low prices. So, spectrum policy and uh, the parliamentarians here know that I am repeating, repeating and repeating it, although having a lot of blockages from people who do not look to the next uh, developments. Spectrum policy should become open, market-based, pro-competition,
And it is now the time to do, because now we have the opportunity of the digital dividend. Let me briefly underline some other trends in the ICT innovation. Only some, because there are many more than those I could uh, underline today. We will see a transition to the cool light-based photonics that could reduce the lighting energy demands by 30% in a very simple way. It will come. There will be a crossover from micro to nano electronic devices that will transform all our manufacturing techniques. The result will drive manufacturing uh, production facilities, and listen, listen, this is very important. It will drive them from best, from cheapest muscle power of today to best brain power tomorrow. And that is a chance for Europe in a globalized world. Another example, cars that communicate between each other and between the roads and the cars could dramatically reduce the number of accidents and the levels of travel congestion. The list could go on, but allow me not to enumerate everything. Allow me to come now to the policy. What does all this mean for policy? makers. Well, my first message is the one of the crisis. In the current crisis, we have to see that we got an opportunity because in times of economic trouble, you must keep up the economic investments in key areas that are essential for short and medium term recovery and for building up a long time future. So not bits and pieces, but a very channelized investment into the future. And cutting back on ICT research investment at this moment would be exactly the wrongest thing you could do, because that would mean hamper your future. We would be cutting off our chances to gain from the ICT megatrends that I have just illust illustrated. So my first message is that now is the time to in intensify and to reinforce our ICT research, development and innovation efforts at EU level. And the 26th of November, when the Commission comes out with its mm -hmm. proposals, how to go ahead, this will be high on the agenda. Second, we need to learn the lesson that Europe is only strong when it acts together. We cannot reap economies of scale in research, in commercialization, when we go local. We need European scale in terms of investment in research and innovation, in terms of opening up markets to stimulate commercializations, in terms of generating the benefits of ICT use for the businesses and citizens. Remember that we have the talent. We invented the GSM the ADSL that gives us most of the broadband today, the MP3, the Linux open source operating in the World Wide Web itself. We have world-beating industry in telecommunication equipment, services, embedded computing system, business software, photonics, industrial robotics. And 32% of global ICT demand, Europe is the world's larger largest ICT market also. But we are fragmenting all these efforts into subcritical national efforts in research and market rollout, and we are losing the whole thing. And that is why I give you another figure. I haven't written it down now. But although we are 32, 33% of the world market, we are only getting out 22% of the output to the world markets. Here we got it wrong, and that is because of fragmentation. And that is exactly the reason why I have presented a shift in the way, for instance, we are doing uh, research in order to overpass the fragmentation. I just want to quote the two first joint technology initiatives, the one on embedded systems and the other one on nano-electronics. 
uh, where we try to get rid of the bits and pieces and putting big industry, small industry, starts up and university researchers on one platform and getting the money together, industrial money, uh, individual member states and European money. We have 3 billion euros now for each of these uh, jetties. And I believe that this is the way to proceed and not the balkanization.